in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It states, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How many have given their life to the Lord? I want you to think about your journey. The Lord is speaking to you. And these two scriptures I'm just going to read and they're going to turn. John 10, verses 28 and 29. And I give unto them, Jesus is talking, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. Jesus is talking. Amen. And he also says what the Father would do. In verse 29 he says, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the Lord is saying, no one can pluck you out of his hand. Mm -hmm. He's also saying a Father can never pluck you out of the Father's hand, who's greater than he. So guess what? No one can take you out of the Father's hand. Isaiah, turn to this one. Isaiah 54, 17. And think about your walk with the Lord. You may have been saved 10 years, 20 years, 5 years, 6 years. You may have been saved 9 months. But think about your journey. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, us Christians. Mm -hmm. And every tongue that shall rise it against thee, us, in judgment, thou shalt condemn, God shall put them. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, his Christians, and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. The enemy cannot stop you. Think about your walk with the Lord. Think about how many times the enemy tried to discourage you. Think about how many times that the Lord allowed the enemy to delay your blessing. Mm. Think about how many people talked about you. People tried to uh, after you confess the Lord your Savior, how they try to talk about you, how they try to take you off of your stand of the Lord. But guess what? You're here. Mm -hmm. the, the enemy could not prevail. But the Lord is taking some work. Everybody turn to John 17. And as I read the scripture, the Spirit is speaking. Any, every Christian should know this prayer. If you're a Christian and you don't know the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, you need to get really familiar with it. Because your <coughs> life is in the scriptures. And your blessings and your future is in the scriptures. John 17. <coughs> and Jesus, he was really praying to the Father. He was pouring out to the Father. He spoke these words. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal, life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the earth was. Guess what? Do you know that you were with the Father? Uh, yes. In yes. eternity? Yes. Before time began? Yes. Amen. Amen. So guess what? You want to get back to that same place right. that, that you had with the Father. Mm -hmm. You have to know who you are on earth. Yeah. Okay. Verse Thank you. Verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known 
that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name, thou who, whom thou hast given me, that they might be one, as we are one. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. None of you are lost. You have been kept by his word. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So guess what? Some of those ones who are not with us right now, they never were with us. Verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they have not, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest keep them out of the world. In other words, the Lord is saying, I'm not going to keep you from temptation. I'm not going to stop the devil from uh, coming against you. I'm not going to stop you from having situations and problems that test your faith. I'm not going to stop those things. But you are going to overcome all those things. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Verse. Uh, we will go to verse 18. Again. As thou hast sent them, has sent me unto the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Guess what? As you go out, others are going to believe because of your faithfulness, because of your walk with the Lord, because of the anointing that's on you. Mm -hmm. More are going to come into the kingdom because of your walk. Amen? Mm -hmm. 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, listen Christians, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Jesus had a certain anointing. He had a certain place, a certain level. <coughs> he wants us to be there where he was. He wants us to have the same anointing, the same relationship. He wants us to be able to uh, pray the prayers, and nothing will be impossible for us the way it was with him. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and, have, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And verse 26, last verse. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Turn to John 16, and we'll read verse 13. Where does it begin? Where does your anointing begin? Where does your blessing begin? Where does your change begin? If you want to go to another level, if you want to travel to another realm, if you want to go to another dimension, where does it start? It starts with 
what God tells you. He's going to speak to you. And as you believe it, it's yours. Amen? Amen. Amen. John 16, verse 13. How be it, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit, how be it when He, the Spirit of truth, mm -hmm. is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, mm -hmm. but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. Why is the Holy Spirit going to tell you these things? Why is He going to show you these things? He shows you by manifestation. Why is he going to show you these things? Because these things are yours. Mm -hmm. And how do you attain these things? You just believe what he said. All you have to do is believe. That's all you have to do is believe. Mm -hmm. Turn to John 6, verse 29. I'm going to prove it to you by the word. All you have to do is believe. And the Lord does the work. Amen. So if you're believing for a blessing, you're believing for a change, if you just know that the Lord is speaking to you for a new level, all you have to do is believe it, and it's yours. John, chapter 6, verse 29, and as Jesus is doing all these miracles, everybody's wondering, how can you do these miracles? How can I do these miracles? Or how can I please God? Or how can I be close to God? Or how can I... You know, be faithful to the Lord. Jesus is speaking. He said, if you really want to please God, if you really want to do the work of God, he said in verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him, or believe on him whom he sent. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we're going to turn to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, read verse 1. And the Lord is preparing your hearts for something. 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 13 verse 1. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. <coughs> two or three witnesses. I am one witness because the Lord gave me this word. I am sent. The Holy Spirit should be touching your hearts right now. Amen. And bearing witness to the word that I'm speaking to you. Yes. <coughs> Turn to John 19. Jesus is on the cross. And I'm just going to read one phrase of John 19, chapter, I mean, John 19, verse 30. One phrase. Three of the most important words in this ministry. It is finished. He finished everything that the Father gave him to. His work was complete. Now go turn back to chapter 17, verse 12. And I want to repeat this. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. None of you is lost. You know what? Jesus has never failed. So think about your salvation. Through these years, through the trials, through the tribulation, through the sufferings, through the discouragement, you have stood and you're still saved. But now God wants to do something. <clears throat> the Lord wants to He's looking for an 